Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back. Today we will talk about one of the most common causes of hearing loss, which is age related. So let's start. Technically, this is called press by QSIS. Hearing loss or hearing impairment is when someone is unable to hear either in one or both ears and this impairment may be mild, moderate, severe or profound hearing loss depending upon how much is the disability to hear. This press by acusis, we know that with time we all go under the process of aging and all the functions of the body they deteriorate with every year so same happens with the age and it is mostly evident in age group of 60s and 70s and this press by acusis it comes on gradually and it looks like that it runs in families so maybe some underlying genetic predisposition there due to the changes in the inner ear and auditory nerve pathway and such persons it becomes difficult for them to tolerate loud sounds and to hear high frequencies sometimes they can hear but they cannot understand what others are talking about Usually they don't have problem with listening to vowels because vowels, those five vowels, A, E, I, O, U, for that they are being spoken under low frequencies. But these people to start with, they have the problem with the higher frequencies as we will understand in the pathophysiology why higher frequencies are involved. So the consonants, especially S, T, K, P, F, these are the problematic words where these are being used are their sounds like sa, ta, ka, pa. So because these are being spoken at higher frequencies, it is a bilateral disease and simultaneously will involve both the ears and hearing loss will be equal on both sides but this loss this is a slow process over the years and years it happens so usually the one who is the patient or who is being affected he or she himself or herself is unaware of this loss and even they don't accept that they are having hard of hearing Now they are talking with one another. This gentleman knows that she is saying something, but he could not understand actually what does she mean. This is the main problem. Zwardi Maker in 1899 was the first person who attributed this relationship between advancing age and high tone hearing loss. This is, as I told you, one of the most common otolaryngological problem of the old age people. Simultaneously involve both the ears, especially at high frequencies. And when high frequencies are involved, there is problem with speech discrimination and central auditory processing of information. This is a sensory neural hearing disorder due to the gradual changes in the ear but some risk factors like repeated exposure to noise for example heavy noise due to traffic sounds or at uh, construction work or at environments you are living around heavy noise is there that may predispose the patient to early deterioration and early presentation of this press by acusis. 
as you know the pinna collects the sound it directs it towards the external auditory canal from external auditory canal this tympanic membrane is put into vibration these vibrations are being conveyed through the ossicles of the middle ear naming malleus incus stapes from foot of the foot plate of the stapes these sound waves they are transmitted to the inner ear fluids in the cochlea and from there they are converted into neuro impulses and can through conveyed through the auditory nerve which is vestibulo cochlear nerve or eighth cochlear eighth cranial nerve and from there it is being conveyed to the superior olivus from there through lateral lemniscus inferior colliculus to auditory radiation and ultimately it is being processed in the auditory cortex which is there in the temporal lobe of the cerebrum so this is the normal pathway of the hearing one in three people they say around the above the age of 60 they are having this problem and when someone crosses 75 almost 50% of the population will be having press by acusis there is no race difference all human beings are being affected by this ailment both males and females and as the age progresses the deterioration also progresses hearing loss is the third most prevalent condition in older adults and world health organization has given us the census statistics that 33% of the population above 65 years of age is having disabling hearing loss histological changes these are seen throughout the auditory system from the hair cells of the cochlea to the auditory cortex in the temporal lobe of the brain but still the exact pathophysiology of press by acusis is not understood properly on the basis of involvement of different areas of this auditory pathway it is being divided into subtypes main there are four subtypes but still we can include some others which are mentioned in this slide it may be sensory it may be neural striel cochlear conductive mixed press by acusis or it may be intermediate press by acusis but as i told you mainly there are four subtypes depending upon the four sites of aging in cochlea which are histologically proven in the cochlea of the human beings so one is sensory press by acusis as the name indicates epithelial atrophy of the loss of sensory hair cells as well as sporting cells mostly outer hair cells in the organ of corti are involved which originates in the basal turn of the cochlea and slowly progresses towards the apex and as we know higher frequencies are being represented in basal turn of the cochlea and lower frequencies they are represented in the apex of the cochlea and intermediate frequencies in the middle part of the cochlea are being presented so when this aging process starts in the basal turn of the cochlea so it means to start with there will be sharp drop in the higher frequency thresholds which begins after the middle age so if we go for audiogram in such group what will happen these are the lower frequencies 125 250 500 up to 2000 you see up to 2000 there is not much loss but after 2000 there is sudden decline in all the frequencies so higher frequency all the higher frequencies are being involved this is because of basal turn of the cochlear involvement so abrupt downward slope of the audiogram it begins above the speech frequency so speech discrimination is okay at this stage what does it mean we know that this uh, frequencies which are audible to a human ear is 10 to 20000 hertz out of this full range which is audible to a human ear 
the human conversational voice or speech frequencies they range between 500 to 2000 so if we see this graph from 500 to 2000 this graph is almost normal but after speech frequency that after 2000 suddenly there is a drop so what will happen that the, at this stage with this audiogram sloping type of graph because there is downward slope the speech discrimination will be fine because the person will be hearing normally the speech frequencies but loud noise or whenever someone is speaking with background noise then these people could not hear it properly so histologically it is a slow process so few millimeters at the basal end of the cochlea will be involved slowly progression is going on maybe not confirmed due to the lipofusion pigment granules at the basal end of the cochlea they say they are the culprit neural press by acusis as the name indicates there will be atrophy of the nerve cells in the cochlea and central neural pathways shuknet told us that 2100 out of these 35000 neurons which are responsible for hearing they are lost every decade and this loss begins early in the life and it may be genetically predetermined in some people there will be more loss at early age but these effects are not noticeable until old age when pure tone audiometer audiogram when 90 percent of the neurons are affected already and this atrophy it is not confined only to the basal turn of the cochlea but gradually it involves whole of the cochlea basilar region slightly more predisposed than the remainder of the cochlea so here in neural type of press by acusis all frequencies will be involved a disproportionately severe decrease in speech discrimination because when all the frequencies especially the speech frequencies are involved then the patient will be having problem in speech discrimination and it may be observed before hearing loss is noted because few neurons are required to maintain speech thresholds. Then metabolic, this is due to atrophy of the stria vascularis. It maintains the chemical and bioelectrical balance and metabolic health of the cochlea. So there will be all the frequency involvement. So flat hearing curve will be there straight. All the frequencies will be involved equally because entire cochlea is affected here due to the atrophy of the stria vascularis. So then speech discrimination is still preserved and this starts comparatively in younger patients in the population of 30 to 60 years with slow progression and it runs in families mechanical as the name indicates it is due to the thickening and stiffening of the basilar membrane of the cochlea and this thickening is more severe in basal turn of the cochlea where the basilar membrane is narrow comparatively so it correlates with the gradually sloping type of high frequency loss and speech discrimination is average so as the changes occur and involving whole of the cochlea so it is rare to find it only confined to one place and development typically involves simultaneous changes at multiple sites so that's why signs and symptoms will be a mixture of these according to the site of involvement. You, nowadays, this research is going on to find the exact underlying cause and most of the research is going on genetic abnormalities in the humans which contribute to predispose press by acusis. Then other etiological factors may be nutritional. Burner at all. They went for relation between B vitamin B12 and folate deficiency. But there were no significant results. Then they said that there may be a positive relation of this press by acusis with high cholesterol levels. But again those who were using statin to keep the cholesterol under control. They don't have any improvement in their rate of press by acusis arteriosclerosis 
will cause diminished perfusion and oxygenation of the cochlea. So that may be an underlying factor. Then diabetes mellitus, it accelerates the process of arteriosclerosis and at the same time diffuse proliferation and hypertrophy of intimum, intimal endothelium which may interfere with perfusion of the cochlea and brain stem neuropathy in case of diabetes mellitus may be an underlying factor. Then noise exposure, loud noise exposure. There are certain autotoxic drugs and environmental factors. Genetics, as I told you, major factor. And last but not the least, stress may play a role in press, early press by acusis. So, to sum up these causes, atherosclerosis, diet and metabolism, the noise induced, drug and environmental chemical exposures, genetics and stress. These can be the causes for press by acusis or they may enhance the process of press by acusis. So, with that we come to end of this video and we will continue with the clinical features in part 2 of this video. Thank you very much.